These next few string of clips that I'm gonna share with you are to help you get some perspective and some understanding and a grasp on the reality that we live in today collectively. Doesn't matter what country you live in, we live in the information age, the digital age, the new revolution, the new tech industrial complex. You need to understand this, that the warfare we face today has nothing to do with world wars anymore. It's about taking control of your mind. It's about controlling your movement everywhere you go. It's about taking the human right down to the minute, the second. Look, I'm seriously only making this content because no one else is. In fifth generation warfare, the lines blur. They blur between war and peace, soldier and civilian, battlefront and information space. That's because the war is over influencing minds, shaping perceptions, and controlling narratives. One way that this has dramatically changed in recent years is through technology, which has enabled a shift from broadcasting to narrowcasting. Instead of just having a few channels that send out information to the masses, narrowcasting allows a specific targeted audience to be informed in a specific way, making things more potent and even more divisive. So keep that in mind as you consume content because someone like Joe Rogan is still mainstream to a targeted audience. Alexa, what is fifth generation warfare? Fifth generation warfare is warfare that is conducted primarily through non-kinetic military action, such as social engineering, misinformation, cyber attacks, along with emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and fully autonomous systems. Fifth generation warfare has been described by Daniel Abbott as a war of information and perception. Alexa, what is behavioral non-kinetic operations? From publicintelligence.net, the emphasis of military operations is shifting more and more towards non-kinetic activities such as psychological operations and information operations, which are geared towards influencing attitudes and behaviors of specific target audiences. Mm. Alexa, what is a logical non-kinetic operation? From globalvillagespace.com, instead of destruction or physical degradation of an adversary via military means, Non-kineticism focuses on exploiting the already present fault lines to critically affect the nation without any physical involvement. Alexa, how does fifth generation warfare spread disinformation? From Bif.com, it is believed that the most powerful and effective tool of the fifth generation war is propaganda being run on social media. In true fifth generation warfare, you do not know who your opponent is. Example, who is responsible for who's the puppet master behind the COVID crisis as, we, as we've experienced it? Who is it? Anybody here know? Was it Klaus? No. There's something above Klaus. Was it Biden? Um, was it Tony Fauci? These are all surrogates, okay? You don't really know who is managing the message that has been propagated on you. That's fifth generation warfare. Over the last three years, Western governments, non-governmental organizations, transnational organizations, pharmaceutical industry corporations, media and financial corporations have cooperated via public-private partnerships, which I assert is a euphemism for fascism to deploy the most massive, globally harmonized psychological and propaganda operation in the history of the world. Okay, over the last three years, you have been subjected to the most massive, harmonized, globally coordinated propaganda campaign in the history of the Western world, full stop. With this campaign, the governments of many Western nation states have turned, okay, this is key, military-grade psychological operations, strategies, tactics, technologies, and capabilities developed for modern military combat against their own citizens. 
These are inconvenient facts. The world that many of us believed existed no longer exists if it ever did. The gist of it is this. Fifth generation warfare is an all out war that is being waged against all of us by our governments and the international organizations to which they belong. It's being waged against each and every one of us right now. And it is a battle for full spectrum dominance over every single aspect of your life. Your movements and interactions, your transactions, even your innermost thoughts and feelings and desires. Governments the world over are working with corporations to leverage technology to control you down to the genomic level. And they will not stop until each and every person who resists them is subdued or eliminated. The most incredible part of all of this is that so few know that the war is even taking place, let alone that they are a combatant in it. The best way to understand this war is to look at some of the ways that it is being waged against us. Information Warfare Perhaps the most insidious part of the fifth generation info war is that it has become so normalized that everyone knows it is happening, but no one thinks of it as warfare. Of course everything is advertising and propaganda. And of course it's being used to manipulate our behavior. That's just how the world works, isn't it? But we ignore the real nature of the info war at our own peril. After all, I've often observed that this is a war for your mind and that the most contested battle space in the world is the space between your ears. You might have thought I meant that metaphorically, but actually, I mean it quite literally. Which brings us to... Neurological Warfare To anyone not yet a victim of the information warfare operation designed to prepare humanity for the coming transhuman dystopia, all of this sounds insane. But for those who have fallen for the Infowar PSYOP of the enemy, these types of mind-altering technologies are exactly as advertised. Exciting opportunities to upgrade the feeble biological wetware we call our brain. But if you think you can avoid the biological aspect of the fifth generation war by simply avoiding the brain chip, you're out of luck. You're also going to have to deal with... Biological Warfare I'm sure you can fill in the blanks with myriad other examples of the attacks upon the world's air, water, and biome that constitute this unconstrained fifth-generation biological war being waged against us. When and if you do put the pieces of this puzzle together and seek to warn people en masse that they're under attack, your ability to resist this agenda will be predicated on your ability to use your accumulated resources, your wealth, to foster communities of resistance. Don't worry, though. The enemy has that domain covered, too. Economic Warfare We only have to look to recent events in Canada to understand what this will look like. This perfect control of humanity, down to the level of being able to witness and ultimately to allow or disallow any transaction between any individuals at any time, represents the apotheosis of technocracy and one of the key objectives of the fifth generation war itself. As this nightmare comes closer and closer to reality, all seems hopeless. But then again, that's exactly the point. The real war. I could go on, and on and on and on, but hopefully you get the point by now. There is a world war happening right now. It is a fifth generation war, or whatever you want to call it. It is being waged across every domain simultaneously. It's a war for full spectrum dominance of every battlefield and every terrain, from the farthest reaches of the globe and beyond, to the inner spaces of your body, and even to your innermost thoughts. And it is a war on you. Recognizing this, the task we face seems nearly insurmountable. How are we to fight back in a war that the majority of people don't even recognize is taking place? How do we fight back against an enemy that has spent decades refining its weapons of economic and military and technological and biological control? How do we fight back in a war that is not taking place on two fronts or even three fronts, but in every domain and battle space simultaneously? Framed like this, our prospects do appear hopeless. But therein lies the key. 
Our perception that it is our duty to fight back against the enemy in their war, on their battlefield, on their terms of engagement, is itself a narrative frame. And that narrative itself is a weapon that is being wielded against us in the battle for our minds. My regular viewers will understand what I'm proposing here. The creation of a parallel society. We won't achieve this by asking for more scraps from the master's table, or by gently complying as we're herded into ever more constrictive technological pens, or by thinking that we can win this war by engaging the enemy in their control the domain. We can only achieve this by creating our own table, our own economy, and our own communities of interest. This will require the long and difficult task of increasing our independence from the authoritarian systems in every domain. The information domain, the food domain, the health domain, the monetary domain, the mental domain, and every other contested battle space in this all-out fifth generation war. Easier said than done, of course, but there is no alternative. Some will say, but won't they come after that parallel society? As if that's a rebuttal to what I've laid out here. The point is that you are already the target of the enemy, in a war that most people but dimly understand is happening. Yes, the enemy will come after you, but they are already dominating you in more ways than any one person can fully understand. That doesn't stop just because you comply with their demands or take part in their system. We must stop playing their game. We must stop fighting their war. We must stop ceding our power our authority, our time, our attention, our energy, and our resources to engaging the enemy in their terms on their battlefield. We must create our own parallel society on our own terms. And so we rediscover an old piece of wisdom. To paraphrase, fifth generation warfare is a strange game. The only winning move is not to play. War is over, if we want it. Your guide to fifth generation warfare.